Now, Zimbabwe is former army commander whose the military intervention helped end Robert Mugabe's 37-year rule was today sworn in as one of the country's two vice presidents. General Constantino Chiwengwa took the oath of office in Harare, pledging to be faithful and to obey, uphold and defend the country's constitution. Veteran politician Kembo Mahadi becomes the country's second vice president. Chiwengo retired from the military last week, slightly over a month after the military temporarily took control of the country. Mugabe then resigned six days later. Emerson Mnangagwa, who had a few weeks earlier been sacked from his job as vice president by Mugabe, then took over as the head of state. Kembo Mohadi, a veteran politician and long-serving state security minister, was also sworn in as the second vice president to Mnangagwa. Mugabe was ousted from power after the military stepped in following internal feuding and factionalism that had escalated in the ruling ZANU-PF party who should succeed him after he resigned. Well, to, to join us, uh, joining us now on the line is uh, Professor Martin Rupia from uh, the UNISA's Institute of African Renaissance Studies. He's also a retired Zimbabwean Army Lieutenant Colonel. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Always a pleasure to have you on the program. And it's been a, quite Thank a remarkable... You for Thank you so much. It's been a remarkable year for uh, Zimbabwe, and nobody would have thought that by the end of it, there'd be two former military people, uh, one vice president and one as a minister in government. Uh, that is true. And uh, of course, I mean, we need to acknowledge Zimbabwe is coming from a very dark past. Uh, it is a result of misgovernance of its leadership. And so the appointments that we see today represents, on the one hand, uh, General Chuenga, who also has got an end PhD, so is now uh, Vice President uh, Chuenga, who led the process of giving birth from the old Zimbabwe to the new Zimbabwe. The process was also, I think, acknowledged the unity accord and the reconciliation between uh, Matabeleland and the rest of the country, you know, given the, uh, 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 you know, the crisis in terms of the Matabeleland uh, uh, incidents. So in, in both the two people that have been appointed, uh, one is seeing uh, uh, fairly a popular person who led the break from the past, and on the other hand, um, Kembo Mohadi, who represents a continuation and consolidation of uh, national reconciliation between the major ethnic groups in the country. All right. So, you know, when people start analyzing this, they'll say, you know, part of the challenges that uh, the former President Mugabe had was that he had to make sure that everybody who could help him was in a position or paying back favors uh, for continued protection. Isn't this the case for President uh, Munangagwa? The man that helped him take power becomes vice president. Isn't this a question of uh, paying back, paying your rent, as it were? Uh, partly correct in terms of the perception, but one hopes that going forward, what has been attempted to be put into place is constitutionally correct, retiring the general from his army post before appointing uh, him onto a civilian post. And of course, the sentiments that are coming out of the new uh, administration are quite positive in that they would like to hold the free and fair elections um, very early sometime in 2018, although constitutionally this must happen before August. So yes, there is a sense of um, skepticism, but I think we have to acknowledge uh, the positive nature that has delivered the new Zimbabwe which has been welcomed by, you know, many people at home and many, you know, uh, are in diaspora, and also a manifestation of a rule of law and, and observing the Constitution uh, that had been uh, a tendency of being violated by the previous regime. 
It does um, the general continue to have influence over the army? I think it's one thing to say that he's retired, but uh, another to say that uh, he can no longer influence the army, even as uh, a civilian now. Uh, you know, people will say that Solomon Majuru still had quite a significant influence in the army for many years after he retired. I, I think partly you are correct in that the, what we saw was an infighting within the ruling parties and UPF. And the faction that had deep roots within the armed forces was able to overcome the other Generation 40 faction, which uh, did not. So, yes, you will continue to have some influence. Uh, certainly, the role of the war veterans, which is now one of, was critical in the transformation that we now uh, see manifesting, you know, manifesting. So, on the one hand, yes, but I think the civilian content in the constitutional you know, context in which the country is moving you know, into, we, we hope that balance will create a sense that uh, civilian elected authority will continue to have preponderance, but certainly the uh, overt role of the military in politics will begin to recede as we go forward. I suppose that he can contribute to that by making sure that that distance is kept, um, uh, he, him, him more than anybody else. Well, you have seen the very early signs of that. Remember when the military seized government buildings, uh, arrested the presidency, and, you know, etc. Uh, there was, a, you know, a period of uncertainty. But uh, in the last week, 10 days or so, the military has handed over to the police, the civilian factions of policing. So one, you know, is, is you know, uh, takes those as, a, you know, concrete examples that uh, uh, civilian authority will be respected, the rule of law, going for, but certainly the break from the past needed something extraordinary, and that's what we saw uh, during the month of November. Mm. Tell us a bit more about uh, the contribution the other Vice President, Mahadi, uh, can make a, in this new era. You spoke about um, perhaps carrying the flame of reconciliation. Uh, Kempo Mohadi is a seasoned politician, uh, uh, very well grounded within you know, ZAPU, uh, Dr. Joshua Nkomo, who led ZAPO, which was now part of ZANU PF, uh, uh, in the reconciliation. So, so the crisis that then beset the country in the early 1980s, uh, uh, you know, leading to the Kukurahundi, is, is something that has been acknowledged to say this is, uh, you know, a, a page that we, the, the, the nation must not return to, and we must make active and concrete efforts to reconcile the nation. And Kemba Mohadi, for me, is someone who can correctly represent that context of bridging the gap and the you know, chasm between the ethnic groups, but also providing uh, a dialogue uh, towards the reconciling uh, a very antagonistic phase of you know, uh, the history of Zimbabwe you know, going forward. So elections are just around the corner. What then happens to ZAPU and ZANU-PF? Well, the Unity Accord of 1987 uh, was designed to bring the two together. And I'm sure if you see the person who has replaced uh, uh, Dr. Chiwenga is now General uh, uh, you know, Valerio Sibanda, who is a background in ZAPU, uh, uh, the other party which you know, formed the ZANU-PF. So, so there is a balance that is uh, concretely and actively reflected in the major posts that uh, you know, or the major appointments that are made in the country. So, behind the Kemba Mohadi, you have to begin to accept that also the appointment of uh, General Sivanda is another step forward uh, uh, in terms of reconciling, but also protecting the integrity and the security of the country going forward. How might the international community that uh, want to uh, help Zimbabwe, that are sort of uh, some investors that are sitting on the fence trying to make sense of uh, what's just happened, how might they interpret these uh, uh, appointments? Well, one of the things that we have done in the work that we do as analysts and uh, uh, researchers is to address a number of uh, you know, ambassadors and uh, you know, people interested 
in, in you know undertaking investments. And one of the things that um, questions that arise in those dialogues is the question of stability, and the question of uh, you know taking the country forward, and also the question of uh, uh, providing guarantees. And, and so what we have seen so far in the in last four weeks at least, you know, since uh, President Managawa was appointed, is that he has put online uh, a very important uh, uh, position to say that, you know, investment will be guaranteed. Security, you know, of Kenya also will be guaranteed. And, and, and of course, we now have, um, uh, again, General Shiri, who is now the Minister of Agriculture, assuring people to say the pieces of land that we, you know, chaotically almost just taken away will be restored, and that property uh, uh, relations in terms of the old farms, production, etc., will also be, prov- you know, protected. So investors are watching, and I think they are able to see and defend the comments that are coming mm-hmm. and the actions, practical actions, that are being taken in terms of restoring, you know, law and order, and, and property rights uh, to the extent that, of course, the whole notion of land reform is not going to be reversed, but you are, you know, the country is simply bringing, you know, into account uh, uh, law and order and accountability and transparency. It's going to be a, a very quick learning curve uh, for the general to move from the army into uh, running a country, different discipline completely. Do you think he's up for the job? Well, this is the point that I said at the mm. beginning to say that he is an end PhD uh, and he is one of many uh, people that they've now trained and can understand the context and the issues. Uh, so I'm hoping that his training and, and with his academic achievements, uh, I almost, you know, believe he will be, you know, uh, able to be up to it. Uh, certainly, the, uh, you know, is a liberation struggle, you know, uh, uh, person. He had the sense and the, the ideological focus to fight for the country and to uh, uh, bring the country to where you know it is. And the second role that he played, when clearly the revolution was going astray, is to bring that revolution back and to begin to respond to the people's concerns. Uh, and if we had more time, we would begin to talk about mm. the the charges that uh, they were you know alleging the president. Uh, uh, you know, to have committed. And one of them was to indicate that the president was not responding to people's concerns. And the president, the 93-year-old president himself, had become the center of instability. And, and this, for me, demonstrates a sense of context and a sense of trying to shape the correct destiny going forward. And the preliminary comments uh, that we have received from uh, people interested in you know, doing business with Zimbabwe are quite positive. So uh, we hope, we, you know, this continues on the right path and on the same path, you know, going forward, providing jobs, providing security, and providing you know, a sense of stability, not only in Zimbabwe, but in the region, you know, Southern Africa as a whole. Professor Martin Rupier, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very, very much indeed uh, for your insights this evening on the appointment of uh, two new vice presidents uh, to President Emerson Mnangagwa. These are certainly historic times that Zimbabwe has experienced uh, towards the end of uh, this year. And uh, one gets a sense that there's some optimism on the streets of Harare, Bulawayo, Mutare and other cities around the country. We'll have more on that uh, in future programs, of course. We take a quick break.